Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with my Victober TBR, which is always my favorite video to film every single year. I can't believe it's that time of year again. It's already here. Victober, if you were unfamiliar, is a readathon that runs throughout the month of October. And the ultimate goal here is just to read a Victorian classic. And so if you read any Victorian classic, you are participating in Victober. It is a really wonderful event that has been run for many, many years here by some really wonderful booktubers who I will link to down below. There are always some really fun prompts involved, and I feel like this year has some really great options. So as always, this is just a massive pile of possibilities. I think you can probably see from the thumbnail that I only have a few books physically. I'm really running out of Victorian books that are on my physical TBR, so maybe this is saying that I kind of need to go on a shopping spree <laughs> sometime soon, maybe during Victober, but I feel like I have exhausted basically my physical TBR. I brought down most everything that is on my physical TBR, but I kept it to basically one book per author. So there are some books that I have that I didn't bring down. I have a lot of Dickens, for instance, that I am most certainly not going to read all of in this month. So I just decided to kind of pick one from each author. But for the most part, I really feel like my physical TBR is dwindling in terms of Victorian classics. So I think the large majority of what I have on my TBR is actually going to be ebooks. So that's kind of exciting. But let's go on and get into the prompts. The group read this year is The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. I don't own a copy of this, and this is really, really long. So this is one I don't necessarily want to say that I am going to commit to, especially given my history with Anthony Trollope, as I just feel like I don't like him. But I do think if I can get a free copy on my Kindle, I would like to at least try this because I think the discussions are going to be interesting. I always love the group reads during Victober, even if it's a book that I don't necessarily enjoy because I get so much out of watching other people discuss it. And this is a standalone Anthony Trollope. I think for a lot of people, this is one of his best. So this is one that is up in the air for me. It's definitely on the pile of possibilities, but I don't want to say for sure that I am going to get to this one this year, but I would really like to try it. So we will see. Kate Howe's prompt this year is to read a Victorian work that features a stranger or an outsider. And I feel like this is a great prompt because it's pretty open. So I think nearly every novel that you pick up could go for this. And so I decided to kind of force fit one of the books that I already knew was going to be on my TBR this year into this prompt. And that is Barnaby Rudge by Charles Dickens. This is the Dickens that I want to commit to this year. In years past, I always put a Dickens on my TBR, and it seems like over the past at least three years, I have never picked him up. This is my top priority of the month, basically, because I think Dickens is an author that kind of haunts me a little bit, since I think I not only want to read at least one book from him, I have often put multiple books of his on my TBRs for the past few years, just to never read him at all. So I would really like to prioritize this. This is his other historical fiction novel, a Aside from A Tale of Two Cities. It's set in the 1700s, and I have started reading this. Back in the summer, I immediately wanted to get into this after rereading A Tale of Two Cities, and one of the big components was a stranger came into town and came into this pub, and that was kind of starting the action of the story. So I think this is a really great one for Kate's prompt, but again, I feel like others on my TBR could possibly go for this. I feel like this is a nice open prompt, so we'll see, but this is really, I think, the book that is at the top of my list this year. If I don't get to this one, I'm going to be very mad at myself. Katie from Books and Things' challenge is to read a work of new woman fiction. And I love this prompt because the new woman movement is really fascinating to me. And so this one is also kind of wide open, but it's basically in the later Victorian period. And I picked a book that I'm going to say is maybe one I'm being kind of flexible with. This might not necessarily go underneath the umbrella of new woman exclusively, but that is Blood of the Vampire by Florence Marriott. 
Really the reason I know anything about this is that years ago I was going to do a video during Victober about bestsellers of 1897, which is the year that Dracula came out. But 1897 was just in general a massive year in terms of horror fiction. So The Beetle by Richard Marsh came out that year, but also The Blood of the Vampire did. And this is by a woman. It features a female vampire kind of in the style of Carmilla. But our main character, who is a vampire, is also biracial and bisexual. So I am really, really interested to read this one because I love to see gender explored in Victorian novels. And I think, interestingly enough, the three books that I just mentioned from 1897 all examine gender in an interesting way, even if I don't necessarily agree with it. The reason I say I don't know if this is technically new woman fiction is that it seems like the author, Florence Marriott, when I was doing some research on her, that she very much would have been considered, I think, part of the new woman movement in terms of getting a job and getting out there and doing stuff, which is what I really associate the new woman with, like people getting trained up to be secretaries and stuff. She was kind of involved in that as a person. And I don't necessarily know how much the book is going to delve into those qualities, but I think at least this book is going to discuss gender. And so I'm going to count it. But again, I have other options for this. This is always just a pile of possibilities. Last year, I had so many things on my TBR, and then I read so many things throughout the month that were not on my TBR. So I am not really going to stress about this, but this is what I'm feeling right now. I think this is going to be really interesting. Interesting. So I'm excited about this one, but given that I haven't heard that much about it, I don't know if it's going to be that good, but I do wonder if this is just one that was underneath Dracula's shadow for a really long time. Marissa's challenge is to read a Victorian work by an author who is new to you. And this is always really fun because I think this is a way to get us out of the big Victorian authors. And this wound up actually being the challenge that was the hardest for me to meet, believe it or not, because I realized that I had structured my TBR around people that I had already tried before, whether I liked them or not. So I wanted to fit in a book, this was a really great excuse to fit in this book, that has also been kind of on a long-term Victorian TBR for me, I would say, and that is The Cloister and the Hearth by Charles Reed. I have never read Charles Reed, and in fact, I don't know if The Cloister and the Hearth is really the only thing he has to his name. It's certainly the only book of his that I have ever heard of, but this is historical fiction that is set during the 1400s. And I have heard really good things about this. It is apparently incredibly long. And so a lot of people think it's a bit of a slog. But at the time, this was a really well-loved book. And I have often heard it compared to Romola by George Eliot. Some people really love Romola and hate this. And some people really hate this and love Romola. I enjoyed Romola. It just took me a few times to get into it. So this is one I am excited by. I think this is set in the Netherlands for the most part, which is honestly a setting that I have never seen in a Victorian novel. So I am looking forward to this. I think this one is going to be good, but it's one that I'm going to have to pace myself with because I have a lot of really long books on this TBR. Petra's challenge is to read a Victorian first person narrative. And this was also a little bit harder for me than you might expect. I was going through all of my books, trying to start reading them, trying to find one that was in first person, weirdly enough. And the one that I have picked for this is by my favorite Victorian author, a guaranteed win for me, at least I hope so. And that is Poor Miss Finch by Wilkie Collins. I cannot wait to read this one. This is probably how I'll kick off the month. This is always my mistake. I always start Victober with a Wilkie Collins and then everything else disappoints me because no one else is doing it like him. But this is one of his earlier novels. I don't know that we would consider this a sensation novel the way that we would some of his more famous books. But this is about a blind main character who is torn between twin brothers. I don't know. It's just giving everything for me. I, I am really excited about this. I think the tagline sounds so interesting. And given that it is Wilkie Collins, there will be some intrigue. 
there will definitely be some paciness to this. So I always like to have a Wilkie Collins around or something that I know is really pacey just to help me get through longer books. So this is one that I'm definitely looking forward to. Of everything on my TBR, I feel like this is probably going to be my favorite. Roz's challenge is a really interesting one. It is to read a Victorian work in which class figures strongly. And this akin to Kate Howe's challenge, I think is a fairly open prompt because class was really openly discussed and was a major theme of a lot of really famous Victorian novels. And so I feel like basically anything that is on my TBR could technically go for this prompt. But I am going to say if I do commit to the group read the way we live now, that is the one I'm going to count for this prompt because everyone who has read this and who has discussed it, reviewed it, they have always mentioned class as a main point in it. So that is definitely the one that I think I am going to consider for Roz's prompt. But I have other books here on my TBR where I definitely think class is going to be a major theme if not the main plot point, I do think it's going to be discussed at length. So I think I have multiple books here that will go for this. The rest of the books on my TBR are just all over the place as per usual. So we also have Basil by Wilkie Collins. This is Wilkie Collins' second novel. I am just going ahead and putting a second Wilkie Collins on my TBR because it seems like I always wind up reading two books by him. The sad thing is I feel like I'm kind of towards the end of my journey with his more popular books. I feel like I'm reaching the end of the books of his that people say are the best, in my opinion. And so I'm kind of sad about that. I feel like I'm kind of exhausting all of the great ones from him. Basil is one that I have heard mixed things about, but I like that it's short. I like to make sure that I have a short book on my TBR. This has a lot of betrayal, insanity, and death. So I think it sounds like a really great time. And so one of these, one of the Wilkie Collins books, I do think is probably how I'm going to kick off the month. But I am really, really excited about this one. This is the one I think is going to be kind of up in the air, though. It seems like this has really mixed opinions. So I'll be interested to know how I feel about it. I also have two books here that I think have shown up on other Victober TBRs from me in the past and I have just never gotten around to them. And so I want to put them tentatively on my TBR this year in the hopes that I am inspired to at least pick up one of these. And so the first of these is Sylvia's Lovers by Elizabeth Gaskell. A lot of people say this is the closest she ever came to a sensation novel. And this is probably the most recommended Victorian novel that I have ever gotten. This is one that y'all say year after year is one you think I would really like. So I definitely want to make this a priority, but it is not speaking to me as much right now as some of the other books that are on my TBR. So we'll see. But a lot of people have said this is really fun and it's set at the sea. I just love books that are set at the beach. It's also been a few years since I picked up an Elizabeth Gaskell. So I do think it's probably time that I give her a try. And this one seems like a bit of a shoe in for me. Just hearing other people talk about this one, I feel like I'm probably really going to like it. We also have The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. How many times has this been on my Victober TBRs over the years? We don't need to talk about it. This is a short story or a novella, I guess you would say. And it's a goat story. I really need something for Halloween. Every year I say this, I really need something spooky on my Victober TBR because something happens to me around October 15th where I go into Halloween mode and the only thing I want to read is horror. So I like to help myself out a bit. I think the reason I have never picked this one up is that I've seen so many adaptations and retellings of it. I know how this goes. So I think that means that I'm less inclined to pick this one up, sadly enough. And I also have a really contentious relationship with Henry James. He is one of the authors that I just don't know how I feel about. So this is one I am tentatively putting on the TBR in the hopes that I get to it because I feel like this has sat on my TBR for way too long. Also on my TBR this year is a book by an author that I tried for the first time last year, fell in love with him, just fell absolutely in love with him. And that is Jay Sheridan Lefanu obsessed with him. <laughs> he could do no wrong by me. And so I was really interested to look up more of his works. You would be shocked to know that I think Uncle Silas and Carmilla 
are basically the only books of his I have ever seen in print from something like Oxford or Penguin. But he was an incredibly prolific writer, and I wanted to pick up something else kind of in the vein of Uncle Silas from him, something really gothic that had maybe a creepy house, maybe a ghostly vibe. And so I picked up The House by the Churchyard. This is actually a book that I picked up last October. Immediately when I finished Uncle Silas, I downloaded this for free on my Kindle, and I knew that I was going to love it. I'm not really sure why I didn't pick it up then, but I think this sounds really fun, really atmospheric. This is also a historical novel. I feel like historical fiction is kind of weirdly a theme for me this year, but this is also a historical novel, and I've heard good things about this one. Though Jay Sheridan LeFanu is really prolific, this is the only other book of his that I had heard anything about. I know people are really big fans of his short fiction. They're really into his short stories. I'm just not a short story girly, so I decided to go on and commit to this. I also last year read A Penny Dreadful for the first time. And let me tell y'all, reading Penny Dreadfuls kind of changed my life. It actually did reinvigorate my love for classics. I've had a long talk with myself this year about the fact that I'm probably just not into them that much anymore. But when I think about reading a Penny Dreadful, I actually get excited. So I wanted to put a couple more on my list this year. I know they are so long. Both of the ones that I have picked this year are by authors that I have read previously. So the first one is The Mysteries of London. I hope you're sitting down. When I tell you how long this one is, <laughs> this is like 4,000 pages. It's broken up into two parts, okay? This is based on The Mysteries of Paris, which is a much more famous book. That's by Eugene Sue, I believe. It is of a similar length. It's also really, really long, but it was incredibly popular in the 19th century. And so George Reynolds uh, decided to riff on that with the Mysteries of London. And I read George Reynolds last year. He wrote The Necromancer. That's the one that I read. I enjoyed that. It was just so long and he would never use one word where 20 would do. So I might be setting myself up for failure here. 100% this is not a book that I will finish in the month. I'm not even going to try to attempt that. But I did find his writing charming, and I also think this will be really fun. The Mysteries of Paris has been a book that I've wanted to read for a really long time, and I think I would really, really love it. So I possibly should have started there. Maybe I should read that before I read this. Maybe I shouldn't put this on the TBR. If you've read The Mysteries of Paris, please let me know. Do you think it's good? But this is my first option for A Penny Dreadful. My second option for A Penny Dreadful is The Black Monk which is by Thomas Reimer. And some people say Thomas Reimer is the one who wrote Varney the Vampire. And when I saw that, I said, I'm sat, I'm listening, I'm ready. Because Varney the Vampire, <laughs> I cannot describe to y'all how much I loved that, how much that experience meant to me. I mean, it was just such a wonderful reading experience. It's literally one of the best books I've ever read. And so I had faith again in classics after reading that. So I want to try this. I don't actually know what it's about. I did read The String of Pearls by him as well, which is the first time that Sweeney Todd was introduced. I felt like that was a massive step down in quality from Varney the Vampire. So I don't know if this guy actually wrote Varney the Vampire. Apparently the authorship of that is in question. So maybe I have never really read anything by this author, but The Black Monk sounded good when I initially put it on my TBR, but I don't really know what this is about other than a creepy monk. So those are all of the books that are on my TBR this year. I'm not gonna feel locked in. My TBRs are like the pirate code. It's more like guidelines than actual rules. So I will definitely be swapping things in here and there. And at this point, at the time of filming, I haven't seen anyone post their TBRs yet. And, and so I know once I see a long string of Victober TBRs, I am definitely going to swap some things in and out. But right now I feel kind of married to at least a few of these. I won't be upset if I don't get to some of them, but some of them are actually very high priorities for me this year. So I would love to know down below what you're going to be reading for Victober if you have read any of the books on my TBR. 
I am just really excited as I always am. This is my favorite reading event of the year. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Happy Victober. Goodbye.